So karibu to everyone. Uh, this is uh, Invest in Africa Masterclass. Today's um, masterclass will be led by a woman that I really respect and admire. And <laughs> I was telling her that I would like to age gracefully like her. She's a brilliant and ex she's, she's amazing. The fact that she, she trains on emotional intelligence, which is something that for most of us women, it's something that we really, really need despite how we are. So yes, um, I'm really happy that she's here with us. She's also a mentor and she's also a mentor to most of our lead, um, our senior leadership team. So you can imagine how blessed we are to have her. So we are really, really grateful. Thank you Mary for giving us time to speak to us, to speak to our SMEs. So we are really, really grateful. Thank you. So I will introduce who Invest in Africa is. Invest in, Invest in Africa is a pan-Africa investment and a trade accelerator, coordinating efforts across sectors to achieve greater skills, impact, replicability when acting alone. So Invest in Africa is a network of network organizations. We bring in different organizations, different people, so that we can have impact for SMEs. We can be able to say that Invest in Africa has done this and this, and we track what we do. So we are not a, a profit or a membership organization, and we deal with multinational organizations, corporates, associations, financial institutions, who share a common purpose to empower enterprises and create positive impact. Our positive impact uh, in this case would be jobs and sustainability. Our vision as an organization is prospering African economies, and our target so far for for that is that we will be able to create 25,000, uh, 250,000 SMEs jobs created and 1 billion worth of contracts won by our SMEs. So how do we ensure that our SMEs win contracts? Um, we have a platform called Biashara.na. So we post tenders from different organizations and we ensure that these organizations are able to, to allow our SMEs to access these opportunities. So Invest in Africa, uh, this program is running under MasterCard project. And under MasterCard project, we had um, five roles for this project. One is to run masterclasses, of which that is what we are doing currently. And then it's tailored for specific SME needs. These are sessions for SMEs to just learn, understand, and ask questions. And then we also have another role that we are doing in this SME and Recovery Resilience Program, we have coaching. So coaching our SMEs develop and implement practical personalized plans. So that is what we do for coaching. And then the other one is access to finance. That is a program that we just started and we are running this program with EY. So if you are an SME that is interested in access to finance, investor ready, do you need investors? How do you go about your finances? So please write to us. This is a program that we, have, we just started and we would be interested to, to, to direct you on who will help you on investor readiness. And then we also have Knowledge Academy. Our Knowledge Academy is interactive, multilingual resource center where SMEs can best practice business guides and resources. So our Knowledge Academy is sort of a virtual library. So in this virtual library, you'll get our master classes from Kenya, Ghana, and Senegal, because we run um, Invest in Africa is, on, is, is just beyond Kenya. In other countries, we have it as APP platform or just Invest in Africa. And then we have peer-to-peer -peer session where if you are an SME that needs to get it to a particular place, you are linked to somebody who is already doing that same um, project or program or business, and they're linked for growth purposes so that you have a peer-to-peer -peer session. And today's session is still one of those. Um, our speaker is a renowned speaker, a renowned business lady, and also a coach. So why are we running this masterclass? Uh, before LinkedIn and other social networks in the sales world, ABC stood for always be closing. Now with social media and LinkedIn, it means always be connecting. That is by Jewel Rowley. 
So objectives of this session is um, during this, this crisis of COVID-19, 2020-2021, how are we helping our SMEs? How are you selling? So this session is to help us to understand how to use LinkedIn and other social media platforms to sell, engage, and retain our customers. So just because we are on lockdown or we are not able to physically sell every other day doesn't mean that our business needs to close. So we need to find different ways of selling and also to learn how to use social selling to build and sustain our business. So that is why we're having this session. Uh, so have our guest speaker is Mary Bukindia. Uh, she's a member of um, Burning Spear. She's a certified leadership coach and a trainer in emotional intelligence practitioner. So I'll just be able to read who she is, but for me, she's just more than what what we see in in a LinkedIn profile. So she's a certified leadership coach, trainer, and an emotional intelligence practitioner with particular interest in leadership development, personal development, organizational development, corporate governance, and gender equity. She's also a business consultant, workshop facilitator, and a public speaker. Over 35 years of corporate career and senior leadership in the oil and gas sector in Kenya and the UK, working with ExxonMobil, Petroleum Institute of East Africa, Kenya National Oil Corporation, and UNEP among reputable organizations and institutions. Mary has a special interest in strengthening gender equity in the workplace and works in various ways to improve women's representation in boards and management. Her board directorship over the years include GT Bank, Kenya Revenue Authority, the Mbogwa Rosemary Foundation, Jacaranda Holdings, and she also holds an award of Moran of Burning Spear 2007. So this is just what I can read about Mary Mukindia, but this is not, um, she's more than this. So we're really, we're really blessed to have you here, Madam Karibu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Feli. When you, see my, when you say Madam, I feel very, very old, but I am old, I'm on the sixth level. And thank you so much for inviting me. And thank you everybody for joining uh, me and uh, Invest in Africa to talk today. Uh, I feel that this is an interactive chat. I do love to be interactive and we're very pleased uh, before everybody, almost everybody came on. Um, we were asking everybody where they work, how many salespeople you have, are you the sales team? And we got very different answers and it helps me understand who I'm speaking to, um, where are you trading? What are you selling? What are you doing? Because I'm also selling. I'm selling my skills. I'm selling my services. And I guess the real question is, um, it's really to ask, what are you selling? Um, and I find that that is, and I will go into social selling, particularly LinkedIn, which I love. But I think it's, it's important for sometimes for us to think, what exactly am I selling? I know you have your menu of products and services, but essentially, what is it are you selling? What's the value proposition that you're bringing to your customer? You've heard me introduce as an executive coach, as a leadership trainer, as a facilitator, an emotional intelligence practitioner, but these are just titles of, of the jobs that I do. What, what exactly am I bringing to the table when I'm servicing somebody, because they say in selling that you're either solving a pain that somebody has, or you're giving pleasure, you're bringing pleasure. It's an ice cream, it's a trip, it's a, it's, um, it's a trip to Mombasa, or it's a new dress or whatever it is you're doing, organizational development, you're, you're enhancing growth. So in all those things, what exactly are you doing? What's your value proposition? And I like to ask my clients or when I'm training, what is it that you bring to the table? Don't tell me your title or the business title or the service product. What exactly are you bring to the table? Let me give you an example. Somebody asked, um, when you say value proposition, when you say I humanize death, there are people who say I humanize death or I humanize the face of death. I would ask you to guess on the chat line, what does that person do? When they're asked what they do, they say, I humanize death.
Some other people, I, I connect uh, people to products. I'm a great connector. Other people say, I build bridges between people. What does that person do? So let me, let me just give you an answer as I look at the chat line because I know we have a very short time. But um, the person who says that you all oh, makes death bearable, funeral services, you're getting close. But actually, and thank you, Priscilla, and thank you, Daniel. Um, spiritual leader, Modoni, not quite. But really, let me tell you, and I'm really a counselor. You're getting there, but not quite. This is a hospice worker. You can imagine a hospice worker. What do they do? There's certain death coming. That person is, is in the last stages. Hospice workers humanize the face of death. They, they humanize that process and they talk with the people and they plan what is coming. Um, you know, somebody else, I build bridges. Maybe it's somebody who's a peacemaker, somebody who's a mediator. Um, so I would like you to think of yourself or your business in that sense, uh, because many businesses do that. If you look at their taglines and what they advertise, you've got to go beyond that simple thing and say, what intrinsic need are you bringing in? I remember running this course in Female Future and I asked the ladies, and one, one lady when I challenged that, they said, actually, I've realized what I do. I... I, um, what did she say she's, um, I sell, I sell peace of mind. And that's a peace of mind. That is so interesting. What is it that you do? Because you want to hook people for the next discussion. And they said, I'm a, I'm a, I sell pension funds. So I sell peace of mind. I'm on the board of uh, APA insurance. We say we ensure happiness so that if you have an accident, if you get sick, your mother gets sick. And you know, in Kenya, poverty is just one hospital visit away or we insure cars if your car is broken out, if your house, house is burned down, if your business is burned down, we insured the JKA airport. And when we had the big fire several years ago, that was the biggest payment in insurance. It was in billions, it had been reinsured overseas. So we said we insure happiness. That's what we are insuring and also ensuring. I, I wonder for yourselves as you're listening to me, what what your business or you yourself what is it that you do what do you bring to the table because that's what you're actually selling to your customer that's the value you're giving when i'm asked what i do i used to say you know i i maximize people's potential and so on which i do i i really help grow people and support them but i think i've really and it's somebody who told me back to the to me because i had to ask them what do what do i bring on the table and they told me mary you know what you do you bring clarity to big ideas. And I thought, wow, yes, when I'm training, when I'm facilitating, when I'm coaching, a lot of people know what it is that they want. It's all kind of muddled. I'm not sure how should I do it. It's all mixed up. How can you help people clarify those big ideas so that they can then get an action plan to go and achieve it? So I'm challenging you. Somebody says here, our tagline is dress up with no fuss. But think of it from the value of that person what value are you bringing uh to them what's the value proposition because it's so important to understand that value proposition because once you do intrinsically you you know that thing that you bring to people then you're able to say who are these people i'm bringing for i you know i remember when we were being you know in my days in Exxon, as we were understanding sales it was so important to know your customer and the banking sector call it kyc and is this something that central bank demands that they know it? Do you know your average customer? Where does, she, where does she live? Where does she work? How many kids does she have or he have? Where do they live? How many miles do they travel a day? Do they own a car? What's their average knowledge? Have they got a degree or is it a diploma? Once you intrinsically know your customer, you can smell them, you can feel them then you're able to really be able to cushion and address your message to that particular person. That is a big bulk of your customers. They'll always be the outliers that um, like your product, but there's a core people that are able to hear you. Yes, um, uh, Feli, is there anything you'd like to say? I know when I'm talking to myself, it's good to have somebody to rapport with and see if what I'm saying is, is getting through. Are they still there? Have they disappeared? Have I disappeared? No, you're still there. We have um, more feedback on the chat. So you're doing a good job. Okay. Uh, I see Rosemary, I said transforming lives and livelihood. Okay, that's good. But bring it a little bit more, more specific because churches do that. Banks do that. Financial services do that. So 
tweet, turn it and make it a little bit quicker, you know, uh, um, a snap here so that you can really be able to get the message of how you do it. But uh, I, I love that you're thinking of that. And once you know that value proposition, then you know who are the, your core people that um, you meet. Like for me in my business, particularly in coaching, I know my typical um, my typical customer or client is somebody who is 40, right up to 60 usually about 40 to 55. I do get younger people, 35, 38. I do get older people, but I know my typical client is in their 40s to 50s. I know that there are people who've been working for 15 to 20 years. There are people in transition. There are people who want to change their career or want to go out and be a consultant or go out and do business. I know their kids are flying out of the coop. I know they are in senior level. So I'm very targeted in terms of, I know the typical person that I, uh, would come to me for discussion, for doing goals. I know they're married. I know their kids are, you know, uh, just finishing school or university. I know they're working professionals, most of them are business owners. I know they're educated. They usually are masters. I don't have one, but they, they're really educated. Most of them are doing PhDs. They have a busy lifestyle, but they're starting to get, you know, I, there's something more to life than this. So it's, it's really good because then you need to know as we go, to, go into how do you reach these people? You have a very clear idea what your value proposition is and what you bring to the table. You're very clear on to who is your customer and therefore how do you reach them? What social media do they use? What digital media do they use? So that you can actually be able to um, directly be able to capture them very easily. I'm looking for other value propositions that I usually have that are excellent. Um, to share because it's so important that you know what it is you're selling and um, what it is uh, like, you know, what then how it is you can address them. Um, there are some I have here that um, we free people from financial shocks. That is a, a micro insurance called Turaco. They also say we free people from the fear of financial shocks. There's some who say we grow prosperity. We grow prosperity through trade. That's Trafigura, it's a huge oil company. Um, there's here head, headhunters who are recruiters. They say we help our companies change the world one leadership team at a time. So you understand, they really understand when they go to sell themselves to their customer, they're saying we help our clients change the world one leadership at a time. British Gas says we solve heating problems. That's British Gas. Um, and I love the ones from International Women's Day two years ago. They say, I mentor girls to face tomorrow. So when you have that larger purpose, that larger value proposition, then these are the products, many products that meet that larger purpose, then you're actually able to find ways to communicate on social selling and giving value even before people ask. It's important to give insights, help people with ideas, and we'll go that into that in social selling. Um, I have a historian who said, my purpose is to remember. That's a storyteller. Uh, another digital trainer says, I help businesses and media enterprises go digital the right way. You see, they've gotten, so I hope you've had an, a, a clear understanding that try and get your bigger bus business purpose, your value proposition, and then that will help you be able to earmark specifically who are your customers. You can feel them, you can smell them, you can know them, you know where they are, what they do, where they live, which medium they use, and then you're able to target them very, very specifically with, with, the, with, the, with the digital media that you like to use or any type of social media. So, um, and I'm really pleased to see people put in comments here. Uh, what should say, selling color, vibrancy, and culture and lifestyle through contemporary clothing. Lovely. And you can you know, start to shorten, shorten that as you get it, get it. And I, I took several weeks and months to get mine. So really understand what you do. So when you meet people and you're giving your elevator pitch, what do you do? I connect people to whatever. Me, I bring color to big ideas. I connect people to color and culture, as Washo is saying. How do you do that? Then you say, I do that through branding, through 
fashion through this from that because you're able to interest people to hear oh i would like that too i want that too and that's why it's important to have it i hope that you all have either a laptop or your ipad or your phone and that you can open two tabs as i speak because i'll be trying to make some practical showings of what we can do but the first thing i want to be able to do is get you to um i'll share my screen and then i'll off my screen to go in media because i want you to um to be able to to answer two questions that i have for you i see christina karemi says we make wellness automatic mm, you're getting it i love it i really love it thank you so much for engaging so let me see if i can share the screen of mine i'd like you guys to find me the panda and when you find the panda in this picture i'd like you to put it on the chat room yes they have found um, what is it? where have they said it is so every, actually almost everyone has got it they say i see it found it found it i see it found it got it but they're not saying where because some people find it and they don't know where it is Do, can they say exactly where it is it's in the top um, right bottom left what, what she says uh middle right and mingi says close to the right third column anthony gatia says middle slightly to the right Okay, so it seems they're getting it. So is it, uh, so middle is around here. If you can see my cursor, yes. can you see? And then right yes. is somewhere here. So here is a panda. Excellent. I'm really glad that a number of you found it. Uh, yes. But I'm sure also there are people who didn't find it. If you didn't find it, just let me know in the chat that you didn't find it. This is a panda. But this is really what happens to your company or even yourself as a head of that company. Because as a business owner, you are the face of your, of your company. You're the face of your brand. There's always a brand carrier. And you are the face. Bill Gates has been the brand carrier and the face of Microsoft. a uh, job was the same now newer people are coming in uh, there's that guy Elon Musk he is the face and the brand a brand cannot carry itself it needs a face it needs a career it's usually the ceo or sometimes the marketing person um you know a country has the brand career and it's important that that's why you have you want the leadership to act a certain way to behave a certain way to be a certain way because they are the faces they are the translators of the human translator of your brand so when we talk about you and your company sometimes it's synonymous you're the brand carrier to show it i saw you smiling feli did people say they didn't find it yes <laughs> yes yes this... like a couple of say that i didn't find it okay we are africans sometimes we don't know the panda because it lives in china and it's a very rare animal but this is a panda all these others are penguins so usually in the world we how many billion people we are 2.7 2.9 something billion people on facebook we are 770 something million people on uh, linkedin there are billions and i mean billions of websites kenya we are 50 million people how do you and your products and the value proposition that they give their purpose how do you then rise to show that out to the public and to the people who need it not to everybody to the target customers that you have so you can see this penguin is wearing a yellow scarf so it's easily distinguishable this one has gone a, a green cap so you see this one with the black hat people are saying oh is that the one how do you distinguish yourself so that the person who is looking for your incredible products services can be able to find you because that's what they're looking for but in this digital world in this online you can no longer go to the newspaper because there are not too many people you'd have to have a long newspaper where people scroll the newspaper of today the yellow books directory for those who may be as old as i this digital platform is where you find people whether they're looking for a job they're looking for a business or a business is looking for you with your particular service and you do need to stand out so that you the panda you who are excellent in your product can be found and this panda is not being found so my question to you are you a panda is your company a panda but is simply not being seen in the midst of all these many ordinary penguins because penguins are so many are you unique 
but you can't be found with your unique product, your unique offering, your unique services, because you have hidden yourself. You don't want social media, you don't digital media. I don't understand that world. Oh, I, you know, because most people post uh, the food they're eating, where they were drinking. A professional digital media has got nothing to do where you went, what you were wearing, what you were eating, and whether you are flying to London. Some people on Facebook are this thing, so-and-so is flying from here to Vancouver. I mean, that's not important. So please do not be a panda uh, that is being obstructed. Be a panda that everybody can be able to, to see. I would like to share my screen to ask you a couple of questions. So my question to you is, what, which of these of the following social media channels are a part of your digital mix? So what I'd like you to do, and I was shown this by somebody who's listening here, and they'll be clapping because Mary's using it. I've used it a couple of times. I would like you to open a tab on whatever gadget you're using and go to this um, website. It's called www.menti.com. Use this code. When you go there, it will ask you for the code. So the code is this one on your screen. 67486087. So I'd like you to go in there and type in your answer. And when you type in, we will see the results automatically. It's a very nice little tool. I was shown by Derek Banga, um, who's a wonderful emotional intelligence practitioner. He's an image consultant. He's a business consultant. And it will be able, if I did it right, I've never used this one first, but it will be able to show me graphs of which of the following social media channels you're using. So go to www.menti.com, put in this code, you will find this question and then click one that, um, which, are the one, which is the one that you're using. So Pat, if you're using one or two, I'm not sure, I think you can put two answers. If you can't put two answers, put the biggest one. Oh, you see feedback is coming very well. Thank you. Keep on putting it for a few more minutes. Derek, I'm a good student. Okay, WhatsApp has moved up. LinkedIn has, oh, LinkedIn has, is, hey, LinkedIn has overtaken Instagram. WhatsApp has gone down now. Twitter has come back. Is it, it, ah, LinkedIn has overtaken Facebook. This is like a football match. I'm a reporter. Wow, interesting. And YouTube has come in at sixth place. LinkedIn has gone down. Facebook has come up. You see, as you type in, all of you, um, the things keeps changing. YouTube now has gone down to sixth place. Facebook is number one. LinkedIn is number two. And I hope the people on uh, Facebook as well and those on, oh, Instagram has overtaken Twitter. Instagram is moving. Oh my goodness. We have a young, wonderful audience. I never know quite what to do with Instagram, but I do know it's a powerful medium. Um, so WhatsApp has gone down and Facebook is number one and Pinterest. Interesting. Oh my God. None has overtaken YouTube. Hmm. I think we should take a copy of the screen because I'm never quite sure how to save this one taken a copy of my screen and all of you can take copies just to see what in the SME sector and maybe this will be interesting for you too Feli what do you think um yes it would be to see what your what your SMEs and maybe even by by different divisions uh Facebook is still leading LinkedIn has come up so this is very interesting thank you so much for participating and I know you're there that you're listening to me so let me go to another uh, my second question I only have two two questions and then we can start talking about social selling. So it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and WhatsApp, and Twitter, YouTube, and none. Uh, so this is the second question. Uh, the second question is, how often do you use social media, your social media channels in marketing uh, your products and or services? This one, you just answer whatever you want to say, the words. I'll see the words coming up because this is now a, a, a word cloud. So just use words and I'll see maybe uh, which words are common. Try and use one word or two words often, usually, not really, whatever. Let me see what comes up. Weekly, once a day, never. Thank you for being honest. 
so weekly is the most. Most of you are, are putting in weekly, every other day, once a day, thank you. Occasionally, never is the biggest because as many of you use the same words, the words that you're all commonly using are the ones that are bigger than the other words. So then I'll know that most of you right now are between never and weekly, not often, not really. What is six, seven, four, eight mean? Not sure. Every other day, once a day. Weekly is the biggest. Most of you are using your social media channels weekly. And the next biggest is many of you don't use it at all. And the third one is every other day. Hmm, interesting. Any of you typing more? You're not, you're, you're many more than this. How many participants do we have? We have 57 participants as of now. On Zoom or on both? Zoom and on Facebook, uh, we have two. Okay. So weekly certainly is a front runner. Most of you are doing it weekly and we'll be able to discuss that. Um, if you're doing weekly, that's a little bit um, low, but... Again, it depends on your, your size of business, your size of products and uh, being able, and the thing is, it's not even just using them as ads, it's engaging your people and that's what we'll be talking about. And just ask, what did you think of, of, of those exercises and what I said about value propos proposition? Um, is there any insight that you got or action that you said, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to do something about that. Is there any insights that you've gotten from our first, um, wow, 43 minutes that we've talked about that you're saying that is something interesting that I like to do? Put it in the chat line and um, we'll be able to chat on it as we go forward. Um, as, as we discuss this. So let me go quickly into LinkedIn. And um, I really want, want to talk about social selling and social selling is the art of using social media to find, connect, connect with, understand and nurture sales products. So it's no longer, we've moved from the world of the hard sale, the cold sale as we call it. The new way of really marketing is ensuring that are you connecting? Are you understanding? Are you nurturing a sales prospect? Are you giving more than just that cold product? Buy my product by buying. So it's a, min, it's a modern way to, min, to develop meaningful relationships with potential customers so that you're the first person or the first brand that your prospect of a business lead thinks of when they are ready to buy. And that means then you need to be in continual engagement to be seen so that people can say, oh, I remember this company. I have been posting things. I remember they had a video about the AMD. And that was really interesting. Now that we need this product, let us call them. And uh, I'll be able to show you how. I've done the two questions. And this is the answer for a, a global study that was done, which came in the US. And um, they found, and I do know our markets are different. We don't have a lot of research here. But they found that 92% of the businesses were using LinkedIn. 87% were using Twitter, 76% on Facebook and then YouTube. So your numbers, Facebook was the biggest. And LinkedIn, I think was about number two or three uh, in there. So not surprisingly, social, uh, LinkedIn is a social media channel for B2B marketers. So for those of you who are in B2B and selling to businesses, you need to be asking yourself, where is the business? They're not on Facebook. Where is the business? And you'll see in terms of lead generation, LinkedIn is way ahead. They're in LinkedIn. A number of them, if it's B2C, even WhatsApp is a very good uh, platform because on WhatsApp, you can use broadcast list. I love using broadcast list. I hate WhatsApp groups. And a broadcast list means that you're the broadcaster and you can put in up to 256 contacts in your broadcast list. If you have more than that, you can, call, you can create broadcast list two, list three. And then when you have a message, you have a poster, you have a new product, restaurants use it a lot, you have a new menu, you have a new offering, you can send out that text. 
straight to your people. And if anybody responds asking for something, it comes direct to you. It doesn't go to 256 other people and messes up their inboxes, which is what happens in group. So if you're somebody who's dealing a lot with customers, telling them of new products, giving them news or engaging them on something that would be useful for them to know, um, broadcast list on WhatsApp is also quite useful. The question, and this I, I so posed on LinkedIn is, are you ready to disrupt your business as usual? Because pandemic has done that for us. The onset of internet and social media has upset the usual way you used to call on a company, you used to go for trade shows, you had the business yellow pages, you had people who'd reference you. The world is getting so big so fast, we're getting so globally connected that we need to disrupt our business as usual. And today, the first place when somebody searches for you or your company is Google. I love Google. Those who know me well know that I say Google is the best thing next to sliced bread. I went to boarding school. So as everybody went to boarding school knows we love bread. That was what kept us through boarding school. So next to sliced bread, it is Google. Because for me, I'm on several boards. I'm on APA, three of APA's companies board, APA Life, APA Insurance, and Apollo Investments. I'm the chairman of Pago Energy. If there's another board I'm forgetting, I'm on, I'm on an, a number of boards, not too many now, I've tried to reduce them. I'm an advisor, I consult to boards. Whenever a company would call me, somebody calls me, they want to discuss something with me, I Google, first thing, as you're talking, I'm calling from XYZ, I'm putting you in and I'm Googling. Because of course, in these days, there's so many charlatans, there are people who are not speaking the truth. And I also want to be informed. I want to appear informed. As you're talking, I want to see who is this, what do you do? So if you call me, I will Google you. When people ask me if they want to join me on LinkedIn, I Google them. I go to their LinkedIn page and see who are they, what do they do? Why do they want to connect with me? So let me tell you, anywhere you go, you are selling your products, your services, people are Googling you. Your digital footprint is being checked and you better have a digital footprint that you have prepared yourself. Not the default one when you're in a party somewhere, drinking, talking, you're in a conference, the picture is grainy, you're in a business deal looking very serious. Create your own branding and who you're about so that people read what you have put. Because most of us, there are a few people at Google and they're nowhere. But most of us have a digital footprint. And you need then to manage that digital footprint by putting out your own footprint on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or on, or on uh, Facebook that is a professional one. This is, we're talking about business and professional. Even my Facebook, I use it for my professional. Very little, I may post personal things because I know what I want to put out is my professional persona, my role. When I'm wearing the hat of professional business person, that's the role that I want to put on. So start thinking of your social media profile as you create whatever is a landing page, whether it's LinkedIn or so on. So salespeople and business owners like yourself, because you're SME, you're the first salesman of your company, they provide value to prospects by answering open-ended questions, responding to comments, sharing content, throughout so that people because the buying process is not the beginning when you're called for a, a you know rfi you know uh, or you're called for a tender that's not the beginning of the buying process that is the end of the buying process and i'll show you some statistics that say there are about 5.7 people involved in the buying process so instead of dealing with that low person who is the one who asked for the tender who asked for the request for proposals there are so many people beyond that. How do you connect to those decision makers so that when people are thinking of buying, you're already in that, the kind of people they want to call in for that. So social selling is really the new sales, uh, sales model. And with social selling, people are using projects. They're using those platforms to research. I told you when people call me, I research. So one of the things I want you to do, and I'm going to get out and come back, there's something called social selling index. LinkedIn has developed a social selling index which shows how are you selling yourself? And it's based of, it's based of, uh, of two components. It's based of, I'm sorry, let me make this, uh, I've not made this. 
it's, it's, it, so this is social selling index, is how effectively do you portray your personal, your professional brand? How do you build relationships? How do you find the right people for your business? And how do you gauge with insights on your business, in your area of expertise, in your area of professionalism? This is what is known as a social selling index and it was created by LinkedIn to help business. Microsoft have used this effectively with their customer relationship system model. Many big companies use it. I, I can give you references later. I'll give them to, to fairly where you can read about the companies that are putting their whole sales force and their customer relationship management tool together because they've realized, and this is a metric for measuring salespeople because they've understood there's a, there's a direct correlation between how people, particularly the sales team, or you as a business professional are selling yourself and the success you're getting in selling. So these are the components of uh, social selling. Have you created a professional brand? First for you, you who's the face of the company, so that when people Google you, they find your picture, they find your brand. When you walk into a company or when you send somebody, suppose you go to a conference and people are wearing plastic, a plastic paper bag over their head, how would you feel? You've gone to a party, you've gone to a conference, you've gone to a demonstration and people are, that you, somebody's walking in with a plastic bag over their head, how would you feel? That's how people feel when you're on, on a social media and the picture is an egg. It's better you don't have a profile. Put your picture. It's your professional brand we're talking about. It's your professional self. LinkedIn is a professional platform. And in any case, we can Google you and find a picture of you. I can bet you, I can Google you very well and I'll find a picture of you somewhere. Somebody tagged you. So create a brand, both for yourself and for your company. I have my brand, Mary Muk myself, Mary Mukindia, but I have Mary Mukindia coaching. I even have, um, which I don't participate very well, I'm sorry. I do more on Mary Mukindia, the person. But I also have Full Circle with Mary, which is a group I have formed of women, that professional women that I love to inform what's going on and we share ideas. I use a lot on that for the WhatsApp uh, broadcast list. But create a professional brand. So any of you who do not have a LinkedIn profile. As a business owner, please, today, action number one, I'm going to create a LinkedIn profile. There are many people who can help you. <laughs> There's Anthony Washira who does that training. I do it, but I do it on a bigger scale with CVs and everything. But there are many people, don't even come to me. Sometimes I'm not very good at following up. There are many people. And LinkedIn itself has got a step-by-step -step free they can show you. If your company does not have a LinkedIn profile, there are millions of companies Bill Gates is there, Coca-Cola is there, Oprah Winfrey is there, Jennifer Lopez is there, and they're all successful people, but they have a presence there. Companies, even ministries are there. You quote, they're there. Breweries is there. And I'll show you why that is important then when you're looking for your prospects and what you do. The next one is you need to engage with insights. If you're a brand, talk about your brand, talk about what it does. You don't just have to be selling, you have to be giving free information to people, engaging with people of what is it that in fact this, give free information that would people help and say, oh, I can do this and that, I can do, wow, this company helps me, even before it sells me something, it's giving me value. You need to be perceived as giving value and sharing. Oh, the, you know, the stock exchange, this is going to happen, whatever, crashing, I would advise people who are in this market to do A, B, C, D. You're selling your knowledge to people and they say, you know, I read an article and that's what helped me do X, Y, Z. And then they say, that company is good. Then build strong relationships with the networks that are there, with the key companies that you want to connect with, and then find the right people. So what I'd like to do now is, um, is ask you to go to your LinkedIn, uh, profile, and I will share my LinkedIn profile. So, because people, are, um, the social selling index is determining how effectively are you are you leveraging your brand so that you can enhance whatever it is you have come to this network to sell as a professional, as an expert, as the person who has the best product A Y Z. 
So do you see here, if you can see here uh, at the top where I have the, where you have the, what's this thing called, my friend? Where it has HTTPS, the, the path. Yeah. Um, what I'd like you to do here, it has HTTPS, uh, www.linkedin.com slash in and then your name. And if you have not been able to personalize this URL, it will have many, many numbers. I have been able to profession to, to personalize mine. So it just says slash Mary Mukindia. So what I'd like you to do is uh, put your cursor right at the end, like you, uh, you can see mine. Let me see. Uh, and then remove all, remove your name and all those numbers until you come to linkedin.com slash. Please do that until you come to linkedin.com slash. When you've done that, please say you've done that. I'd like us to move together. I wish there could be a screen where you see many people so that you can. Un I think I'll buy two computers from now on. They want to see people and want to present. Ha are they saying they've done that? Please go to the file path where it says Sorry. HTTPS. Yes. Yeah. And we have, we have three people who think they've done. Yeah. Fourth Just one, Kevin. Good. Remove all, all those letters and your name until you come to www.linkedin.com slash. Now, for those ones who are fast in the class, the others who've done it, but they're quiet. I want you to put the word sales in small letters, put the word sales forward slash SSI. Just do that for me www.linkedin.com slash sales, small letters, slash, forward slash SSI. And then I want you to do enter. Mine has gone down. I've not been active. I used to be 70, 71. You should get something like this. I mean, you're saying, you write down your number. Let's see what are the numbers coming through. Please tell me what your uh, SSI is. Very disappointed, mine is at 68. My new target is to take it to 85. I saw a video with people with it in the 90s. I was very impressed. So we have um, from Paul, he says it's 3%. Mike is 43%. Dan Jomo, 43%. Lim is 34%. Brigitta, 25, Candy, 36, 49 from Christine, Isaac is 59, Daniel Moasia is 50. Who had and six? Oh, Silvana has 71. Well done, Silvana. Well done. You've got, I, I was 71 a week ago, 10 days ago. I need to go back. I'm not engaging. Uh, who had 6%? 6%. Um, 3% from Paul. Paul, yeah. Paul, we have to work on you and all the others, even my 20s and my 30s. So this is your social selling index. I've been actually six. Okay, thank you. So this is your, this is by the activity that you're conducting and it's done through algorithms. It's all about algorithms and I'll be talking to you about algorithms. By the way you are, you are, participating on LinkedIn is able to say your social selling index is this number, mine is 68 out of 100. And as I said, they're looking at how have I established my professional brand? And if you know what, if you want to know what that is, click there and it will tell you, complete your profile with a customer in mind. Remember that customer I said at the beginning, you need to really know, smell, feel, understand who's your customer. So when you fill in your profile, you're filling in the things that you know this is what for my customer is important. They want an expert in this. They want experience in this. They want somebody who does this and that. And also they ask you to become a thought leader by publishing meaningful posts about your business. If you, you, know, you are into fashion and fashion products, then talk about fashion materials. Uh, tell people how cotton doesn't let you, it doesn't scratch your skin if you have allergy. Post things that are nice and pictures and videos. Then it asks you to find the right people. How good are you? Identify better prospects in less time using efficient 
search and research tools. So it knows when you're looking for people for your business projects, how do you do that? And are you using efficient tools? So it gives you a score out of 25. All these four items is after a score of 25. Then it checks whether you are discovering and sharing conversations with people. Are you engaging with insights and sharing comments and discussing with various people in your area of expertise, or even sometimes general, but a lot more in your area to be seen as an expert? And then the last one is, are you building relationships? You all know business is about relationship. Leadership influencing people to make a buying decision, and they say this is better, is through relationship. Businesses are done because of people feel, I have confidence in that company. It has a good reputation. All that is through relationship, and then they get your product, they prove your product is good, they tell people, I ah, know you should try this product. So are you strengthening your network by finding and establishing relationship and trust with decision makers? Four out of five people on LinkedIn are decision makers. And are you building? Now, when you go down a little bit, there's somewhere you have said what your industry is. So this is measuring you. It's calling you a sales professional because you're here to sell your products, your talent, your services. So I have put here in the professional training and coaching industry. So it's important for you to see on your profile, make sure you're in the right industry. For the person, person in fashion, are you in the fashion industry? For the person who is in technology, are you in the technology? For the person in finance, so usually people change jobs and they, they still leave aviation sector and they left aviation sector, they went into another sector altogether. So try and relate your sales professional in, think about which business am I in? Am I in the retail business? And LinkedIn has a whole list where you pick. So what is doing here is comparing you, similar people, sales people in your industry, whatever you've written here, what did they score? And therefore, you are, are you in the top 4% like I am, or uko kule musho, you're in the bottom. So if you have a very high number here, it means out of a class of 100 students, from number one up to number 100, the bigger the number, it means you're uko nyuma, mukia. And you want to be at the top of your industry. So you can set yourself a target and say, for the next three months, I want to be in the top 20%. In the next other month, I want to be in the top 10%. And the same thing here, it's looking at people in your network. These are people I'm connected with, people who have a fast connection with me. Where do I rank? Am I middle, top? So it will be interesting for you because it gives you a comparison against people in your own industry, and it gives you a, 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 a kind of an assessment against uh, people who you are connected with because your connections are what you use for business and you use them and their connections. Their connections are what we call second connection to you. So that's how you, you, you use them. So that is uh, something that I thought would be interesting for you to look at and start to understand, even for your sales team. If you are somebody who has sales teams, your company make sure they are on there, they are connecting, they're engaging, they're looking at, do you know somebody so they can say, boss, I see you're related to so-and-so, you're connected with them, or a second person, that is a company we made the pitch last Saturday, they've asked us to do, can you call so-and-so and see exactly what they need to be, to be uh, explained further? Then now you can call the person of a friend and say, by the way, this company asked us to come back again. What exactly are they looking for? So these are what allows you, instead of calling and asking on WhatsApp, who knows who in Brewer is, who knows where? These platforms allow you to completely understand who is there. And I'd just like to, 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 to do an example. I had a presentation to explain exactly what LinkedIn is, how it works, how many people are decision makers, and I can go that through, but I think it's important that I also show you some of the tools. Um, and maybe you can do this with me as well. Um, so what I want you to do, you, you can all see my screen? Are they saying yes? Yes. If you can yes, see. Yes, we so. can still see your screen. One of the things is that, do you see here where it says number of connections? The average CEO has 930 connections. I know people with 1,000, 2,000. Mine are about 900 and 
This would be 830 for a long time. I think I've moved to 920 or 946. I don't know. But when you have lower, if you have 500 and lower, LinkedIn will actually show exactly how many connections you have. So when somebody wants to connect with me and they have 16 connections, I'm like, I, why, why do I want to connect with you? I can't even use your networks. You don't even engage on this platform. But, you know, or if you say I have 120 and I'm like, I, you're not serious about LinkedIn. Why did you come? It's like you go to a party, but you don't want to, to circulate, have your cocktail, talk to different people. You just want to go somewhere and sit in a corner. Then why did you come to the party? You're in the party of networking, of social selling. You should be doing your best to look for what is the best prospects and networks decision makers for your business. So if you have 501, LinkedIn will always put 500 plus connections. If you are 500 or 499, it will show exact numbers. So try and see if you can, and don't do it in a hurry. You want your quality networks to be good networks, but have a plan to consistently update. So what I'd like you all to do is I want you to press here. Where it says connections, it's a link. It's already in blue, press it. Have you pressed it? If you have pressed it, it will show you what I have here. It has people in green with a little uh, drop down banner. It has fast with a little uh, drop down banner. It has locations with a little drop down banner where you can put any location, Kisumu, London, New York. And here it has company. So let me pose to you, all of you. I'm sure there's one company that you've been trying to, to, to to get in. This company buys my product, they're using my competitor, but my product is much better. I wish I would have the opportunity to demonstrate these are the buyers or these are whatever, but I only know the guy who puts out the tender, the decision makers, they are quite far. There's, there's one company you would like to get in touch with for whatever reason, maybe it's for digital marketing. That company that you would like and would like access and you've been trying to get a connection in that company, I want you to drop down the banner here, as I've done, and write the name of that company here. Now, for me, which company would I really like to get into? I don't usually like corporates too much. Um, let me see. Maybe I put Stanbic. Stanbic. And you will see automatically the company will appear here. Unless it's a company that has not branded yourself. I'm saying you have 50 million companies, at, you know, or how many users on LinkedIn. The company will, will come here. Even the ministry, some of the ministries are getting much more better. The company will come out there. So are they saying, yes, they've done that? Please, please let us engage so that I know I'm not talking to my computer alone in my house, though I can see fairly, I feel much better. Please have one audience. Uh, Samson had offered you to use his LinkedIn profile. Sorry? I don't, uh, yes, Samson Omar. See, Samson Omar had said that he uses LinkedIn profile as an example. Okay, uh, but I, and then uh -huh. Aaron is saying try Sang Sangyuk. So I want you um, to do it for yourself, not for me. It will only come out for you. You see, that's a good thing with LinkedIn, and that's why when I when I train people, I, I use my screen and your screen because what will come out are my connections, but you don't want my connections. I want you to see your connections that can get you to those companies. So please write there the company that you have been wishing to get an inside track and get to meet and, and discuss and engage and network with those people. So may I put Stanbic, you, what will you put? Because it's you who wants that company and it's for you to see the connections that you have. I might even know them or maybe have no connections. So once you have put in the, the name, have you put in the name? Please say yes. Philly, have you put your own company that you'd like to be networked with? Yes. Okay, Kyoko has put, thank you, Kyoko, Raphael. Um, everybody, what are they saying on the chat? Have they put? Uh, Lim has done, Mike has done. Okay. So now click, saying yes. click that company. So you, and then it has ticked here, stand big, then say show results. Press show results. And what will happen is that it will show you all the people in that organization that you're connected with. 
For me, it has said no results. I'm not connected on a fast level with anybody in, in uh, Stanbic. So what do I do? If you're like me, you press here where it says first. Now tick second. Second means people who are connected to your first connection. You share a connection. You, you don't connect with them directly, but they connect to somebody you're connected with. So you have a shared connection. So if you do that, you press show results. And automatically I have got 290 results. There are 290 ways I can get into Stanbic Kenya, despite the fact that I don't have a fast connection with anybody in Stanbic. Stanbic. And all these names, it tells me who are the people that I could get into, into Stanbic. John Okulu, he's a group director of corporate banking. Now I can get to him through these people, these two and 14 others. So I can call Bithe, who's my friend, and say, hey, Bithe, I didn't know you're connected to John Okulo. I'd love to meet him. Can you connect us? Can you have a lunch and invite me to your house? Because it's very important. It's a very big tender. Or can I send him a note and I'll say, I know you are very good friends. You recommended me. Now, when John Okulo gets a note over LinkedIn saying, oh, hi, I'm Mary Mukindia. Bithe said you two are good friends and we, we are coaches together. Uh, she has recommended me that we need to get to know each other. He'll say, I know Bitha is my friend. He'll connect with me. And I already now will be connected with the group director, corporate banking. And so on, Charles Mudiwa is a CEO. So I already, I may not be connected with the CEO, but you see Martin Oduo, John Mukono, and two other people can connect me to the CEO. So if I press here, I will get who are those people who know the CEO, and I can already now be start moving in those circles. I can say, oh, I know so and so. So this is what you do. And if you go here and press third, and we say show results, I have now 742. It moved from zero, I had no direct contact. It went to 290 people we share connections with at very senior level. And then people who know people that are connected with me, the third level, I have 700. So I have 742 ways of getting into this. So what sometimes you can do here, you can even put, um, you can even put a title. You can go on your own and say procurement, procurement EABL. And if you press procurement EABL, everybody in procurement will come out and it will show you all the people you know who are connected with that person who share connection and you can be able to talk to them and say, oh my goodness, I didn't know you know the procurement head at BAT. Oh, I've been trying to get in. Kumbe is your second cousin. Oh, you went to university together. You can actually know we were at the university at the same time and you have all the connections without asking any one people, do you know somebody where? Because this is one of the, and it's only one very small tool. I've just shown you two of how to look for connections how to do this, because it's a very big subject for you to um, start to understand um, what it means and how you can be able to leverage connections and networks that people use. Let me see if there's any feedback just from those two small demos. I know it's 12, 16. I had, a, I had a presentation and I'll see if I can raise it just to explain to you the power and the, and the numbers of people in, um, in LinkedIn and what it does and it's B2B business. As I'm doing that, if anybody wants to give any feedback, any comment back, um, that would be very useful. But I think I need an amphitheater and I need to see people and then we put a huge screen and people with laptops and we spend half a day just going through this because there's so many tools. Feli, over to you uh, as you're looking into that. So um, the feedback that we have is yeah um i'm trying to look for that specific feedback emma and Juru says i need to engage someone who can build and can help me rebuild my professional linkedin as i prepare to re-enter and then she shared an email so uh emma i think we will share it out to the network uh mary mckinney's network specific people who are doing that yes and yeah, and by the way, you can even build it yourself. Uh, LinkedIn guides you slowly, tells you now fill your education, 
You feel your education, mm. now feel your qualifications, now feel your business, what does your business do? If it's your business page, uh, how many people work there? Uh, insert some videos of your company, your products. It actually guides you even how to post what to put in. But uh, yeah, getting help is good, but it costs money. And in these pandemic times, you don't have money to use so much. It's actually a very simple process. And don't try and build it in a day or three weeks. Build it slowly because it's interactive. You should always go to LinkedIn. The average time people spend in LinkedIn is about 16 minutes in a week. People go in once, 10 minutes. Just say, I'll spend 10 minutes on LinkedIn every day around lunchtime, read the news, what's happening, comment, and you'll be able to really start engaging on your score. Yes, Feli. So we have um, Caroline Muremi says, thank you, the presentation has been an eye opening. Uh, Christine says, I need to stop mucking around with LinkedIn and get movement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me show you some, some quick uh, suggestions. Um, so social selling does work if you implement a strategy and take the time to build online relationships with your prospects and your customers. And there are so many, as you saw, just one search in one bank, stand big. I came from 0 to 90, 943. And then I could say, who am I looking for? I'm looking for HR, head of coaching. And then I can start posting articles on coaching, giving uh, tips on, on how to engage your staff. And then I tag her. And it's a free article, very good article, short on, on how to engage staff, what are the latest figures and what is the latest thinking about uh, employee engagement and productivity. I tag her, I tag Stanbeek. Somebody reads it, they say, actually, it's a very good article. This lady knows what she's talking about. It is when you're giving content that is helpful to people, next time they're looking for that service, they'll say, you know, there's somebody who has been writing articles and giving very good tips on how to engage employees and how in the times of COVID, uh, we did webinars with the general's uh, coaches, uh, Derek who's here was there, Vicky Karuga, who's the CEO, and we were giving free webinars on, you know, working from home, remote working tips, isolation, what you should be doing, how you should be engaging, and, you know, using international material, using very good research uh, points, and people really felt grateful because they got tips on how to supervise, how to work, how to create thing, what to do. And it's given us back mileage because now we are being seen as the experts and the thought leaders of that area. So five reasons why every B2B business benefits. You can see it here because it's shortened sales cycle, you close the deal quicker, you gain insights, you build a competency profile, you influence the buying decisions before. If you know somebody's doing a major project on some on some uh, IT, there's somebody here with a system, a technology company, start writing about technology and, and say the top 10 rated uh, uh, sales systems that companies should buy, post it from Forbes, comment on it. And people say, hey, yeah, this is the article, this person knows what they're doing. When they go to tender, they will not take some funny uh, system from nowhere because you've already been sharing and be seen as a thought leader. And then you maintain your own reputation, you strengthen your, your, your brand, but you also engage in natural dialogue, very authentic. Um, so let me see, I'll just move to, what I would like to urge many of you to be doing is do content marketing. Six out of users, are, six out of 10 users are always actively looking for industry insights and they go to LinkedIn. And there are about 280 billion feeds that are viewed annually. You need to be one of these feeds. Do you know that the, the number of people who engage on Facebook, which is 2. Point, now 2.7 something, and I'll show you a billion users, is 1%. 1% are the people writing the content. The other 99, and I hope you're not there, they are like, share, like, share. So you're getting to be a consumer as a business owner, as somebody who wants to excel, as the people who are giving employment to Kenya, be the one creating the content. That's why everybody is about Kardashians and I don't know which companies and what's happening and the politics, because we're all consuming. Change the narrative. Be the one percent that so many people read. You'll be surprised when you post an article. How many people view that article? I have posted articles in the last few weeks. One had 6,800 views. 6,800, and I was congratulating somebody, a lady who Elizabeth Asuna was doing brilliantly in uh, APSA, 
She had won an award. I did the link and then I spoke about her. I did Catherine Karimi, who's a CEO at APA Life. She won an award, insurance awards. I also profiled her. Over 4,000, close to 5,000. Mary Mulili, Executive Director, APSA, no, uh, UBA Bank. I put her there and people, the views, let alone comment and likes, people are reading the material. That's why there's 280 billion. LinkedIn makes up for more than 50% of all the social trans, uh, traffic to BNB sites, websites. So what it means is that there are billions of websites around the world, billions. Everybody's got a website and blogs. LinkedIn alone funnels 50% of that social traffic. And that's why LinkedIn is the biggest B2B lead generation. And 92% of B2B marketers, they include LinkedIn in their digital. So please create content. Start thinking of content marketing. Some of you said you share things week equally. So only 3 million. Imagine if you shared every two days. How to, and list posts, are, they perform best. How to, 10, 10 things, how, how, to, how, to, how to sell real estate. 10 ways to sell real estate. 10 things you can do to make yourself perform better. Whatever it is, those how, uh, lists are uh, 10 cities to see, you know, so list things to do. And that will be very interesting. So there's nearly 740 million members in 200 countries and region. Kenya, we used to be 2 million, where are we? Kenya is 2 million plus users, but believe me, four out of those 2 million are decision makers. So there's 55 million companies globally, 36,000 skills, 115,000 schools for those people who market things to schools, 722 million members, as we said, it has had a growth, by the way, is owned by Microsoft. Microsoft bought it in 2016 when it's realized, oh my goodness, this company has a huge potential. I'm not on premium career, which is $30 a month almost. I'm on the free one. I used to be on premium, depending on how digital and how you want to search for, for your businesses and giving you even more tools to search for who are the decision makers, who are the buying people, and so on, you can be able to do it. LinkedIn is the only social media where people pay money. A third of its income comes from people who are paying for premium. Then the other big percentage of its money comes from recruiters. It has 55,000 jobs. Recruiters pay a lot of money. They get more algorithms. They get more access to be able to see the careers of people and what they want. And the others is they have also a teaching, a teaching. they have slide share that they teach. So you can see these are some of the globally used um, platforms. And you can see Facebook dominates. And Blue says who owns it. Facebook owns WhatsApp, owns Messenger, and owns Instagram. And this is who Facebook dominates. But when you go to effectiveness for business generation, LinkedIn is right at the top. Mm. So Facebook has 2.7 billion users. LinkedIn has only 700 plus users, but they have the highest effective, effectiveness for B2B because LinkedIn is for professional business. It's not to post pictures about what you ate, where you went, happy birthday is purely for business generation. And Twitter is the second one at 55%. YouTube, and this, you know, YouTube is the next one. And then of course it's SlideShare. Um, so there are some facts and figures that are very useful, very interesting. Uh, what I would like you to do is this one's for business. 90 million of these users are senior level influencers. 63 million are decision makers. 61 are senior level influencers. And as I said, it's proven to be the most effective uh, platform for lead generation and customer acquisition. And it's 277 times more effective than Facebook for generating leads. And 65% of BNB customer or companies have used it and have used paid ads even on LinkedIn. I've never even used a paid ad. I still get people who contact me for business. I get offerings on it. And 92%, um, 96% of BNB content users use this far more. The next one, uh, who's down is um, is I think it's LinkedIn with probably seven, you know, seventy something, but 96% of them. 
So these are statistics that show you how you can engage, what you should engage in. But I want to take you to this 51% of companies acquired a B2C ca customer through LinkedIn. 93, as we said, that was the older 96 now, concede 93% of companies consider it to be the most, um, I've got two minutes, as the most uh, effective lead generation. As I said about going to websites, about half and half are women. These are some of the branded facts. Over 3 million companies, and as you saw, have LinkedIn. I don't know who I've not found. Millennials are very many millennials now in it. 61 million liters are, users are currently senior level, 46 female. Like I said, an average CEO has 930 connections. There are more than 50,000 standard skills. Many people now employing through LinkedIn. How to posts and list posts get twice as much views. User profiles with pictures, not egg, get 21 more times views than when you have an egg. Articles without videos do well, but posts, posts with videos do very well. So there's posts and there's articles. And let me just show you about this. This is about leveraging your brand. So those of you with 6, 3, 20, 40, you need to do something. This is the evidence behind social selling that 57% of the buying journey is done before even the sales rep is involved. By the time they do the TOS, they decide what they're buying, what quality do they want, what kind of companies do they want to invite. All that buying decision is done before even the sales rep is involved. And 54% of people are now involved in the average business to business buying decision. It's no longer the procurement alone. Oh, uh which person md alone no 54 percent of people are involved in that average buying decision so if you're selling to a business know that it's more than just one person so those people need to be influenced to be able to see your brand or your product as a very reputable and good brand now 75 percent of b2b buyers use now use social media to research vendors you start telling them i'm from something engineering mm, they're typing they're seeing who's the CEO, what have you done? Uh, what, do you put, what do you have? What are your products? Any videos? What are you sharing? And 90% of decision makers say they never respond to a cold outreach. You need somebody they don't know because you don't want to make a disastrous decision. You want somebody, you know they've done the work, you heard of them, they've been recommended, you see which companies they're connected with, where they have serviced and therefore, and that your customers are putting testimonials on, on the site, you're launching a product at a new customer, take a photo, we're putting in new engineering benches at CMC, take a picture, pictured with so-and-so, thank you, this was a wonderful uh, work uh, we did for you, that speaks to your company as a testimonial. Um, so, you know, and 74% of, of buyers choose the sales rep that was the first to add value and to add insight. So these are really quick statistics that I can share that you can look at. You can see which are the industries that are using um, social selling, technology, software, professional, even government, education, non and non-profits. They all tend to tend to use this a lot. This is something that has shown people with an SSI, social selling index, the one we showed, over 90 are three times more likely to be promoted. This was a study that was done somewhere. And this one, they, they took 33 months to be promoted to VP, while the people with low took 50 months. This one, they took 31 months to be promoted from manager to director, when people with low SSI took 30, you know, it took 44 months to be promoted. So there's been research that has said high SSI index is defined as 70 and above. So what I mean, I used to be 70 something, 71, 72, I need to work on it. That's a high index. So what I showed you is that you have the number of connections. You need 501 at least. Then how many people do you have two degrees away from you that you can connect with? You saw in the case of Stanbic, I ended up with 290. Then how many people are three degrees away? I can ask somebody who knows that person to call them. I had 700 and something. So it means I have a big network that i can connect with to help me to reach 
the goal of where I'm trying to, um, to link through. So these are some of the um, opinions about pandemic. People have been changing their response to pandemic and making sure they're making quick changes. Change your targeting message. The content, the content that you're putting has changed because of pandemic. I hope you've been able to change the content you're putting in and are helping people to see what they can do better because of the pandemic. So people are changing the message. And the people who are successful are those who have a documented content strategy. They have the content marketing, they've chosen it. They use a calendar to post. They have established an online community and they use metrics like the SSI index and others to see whether they are succeeding. Those are the ones here who succeed the most because they end up generating sales, creating networks that can then come for it. I'm sorry, it's been a little bit of a speed. I did want to do the practical showing you but um, perhaps if i've done well and you've gotten even one thing this is the road to perhaps coming back and sharing a small piece one by one like whatsapp i'm not too fan of a fan of facebook but it also does very well for certain things it's very good youtube have gone into it a little bit and the ways that you can be able to package yourself so that when people google you they see all your offering and what you do and who your networks are and you can be able to leverage that so thank you very much i'll stop sharing and see whether you'll even give me one minute it is 12 34 so i've gone over i'm sure it will be goodbye thank you so we have very good feedback um emma says i need to engage someone okay we've read that one um Caroline Muremi says, thank you for the presentation. It has been eye-opening. Uh, Helen says, thank you. I was late for, for the meeting, but I've already learned something. George Ocheng says, that was very helpful. I really need to up my LinkedIn network. Asante Sana Mary Mukinia. Uh, Raphael says, this is so good. We are constantly engaging new stakeholders to join our ecosystem. And it has never been this easy. Thank you, Mary, for such a hack. And then Samson says we share the presentation. Samson, you can get it on our YouTube page and also our LinkedIn. We will share the video, the recording, so please check it out. And then Emma says, what are you to learn from Mary? And she's put three exclamations for emphasis. Thank you. I used to, <laughs> she says, I used to find her admirably clever and confident when I used to work for ESO as a student trainee, and I wanted to be her when I grew up. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I worked in ESO for 17 years. Lovely. Thank you. So, Emma, you wanted, I, I myself still want to be Mary. I'm still growing up, and I still want to be Mary. So Priscilla says, please send us a presentation, a beautiful presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Lim says, thank you very much, Mary. I've learned a lot. Mads is still asking for the presentation. Thank you, panelists. Very enlightening presentation. And I open up for me, Isaac. Thank you. How often do you recommend posting something on LinkedIn? That is from... Um, so Hal is asking, how often would you recommend sending something on LinkedIn? I would say um, twice a week or once a week would be good. Uh, sometimes you may share somebody else's comments. You may see something written very well, an article, so you could share it with your network and say, this is a very thought-provoking, what do you think of this article? I, I, I would typically say at least twice a week if you could. Uh, and then maybe uh, once a month, write a very good article that's very thought provoking, that is uh, very good for your industry to establish yourself as a thought leader. Um, so we hope that is um, that has a satisfaction. So we still have Marge saying thank you so much for the insights. Grace, thank you. Great presentation, lovely insights. And Finally, we have Mital Shah. Thanks for this. Many good insights. Please also assist on those who can help to create digital videos um, with the technical staff to help complement our current social selling. 
Yeah. I, there, you know what I love about Kenya? These young people, oh, they're so talented and they're not expensive. Don't go to big companies. There's so many people who are actually producing content. Uh, we have YouTubers who use their camera, small camera. My daughter, who's barely 20 or 21, is a YouTuber. So you will find very young people, very smart, who can do animations, who can actually do little videos, or you can come in once a week. I have videos. I've done some YouTube videos of how to be on online and maintain your presence. Because every time I type in a, a YouTube, I don't want to find Wazungus only. I want even Africans who can speak my language and I relate to. So, um, I mean, I can give you some young men from the Bogorosme Foundation. I'm sure you have SMEs who do video, videographer, but do not be afraid for looking for younger people, young interns, young people. They're very good at all this digital stuff and they're not that expensive, I can assure you. And then I've been asked to say, uh, really, so the new ways of marketing through your presentation after this pandemic. Thank you. And Anne Mingi says, thank you, Mary, for your education. Your energy is 100%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think um, we wrap it up with Mudoni Ranji says, fantastic presentation. Thank you, Mary. I'm so pleased. I was so worried and a bit nervous because I've been so busy and doing other things. And I said, engage yourself, be quiet. It's okay. And thank you for all those wonderful um, comments because I feel encouraged to do this more and more. Thank you so much. I think Terry is logged in, our COO. I don't yes, know I if she's able that. to speak. Mm. Terry Karibu. Thank you very much. As uh, Felista has said, I am Terry, the Chief Operations Officer for Invest in Africa, Kenya. And um, if, you know, I've been asked to speak and the only thing I can think of, Mary, is just to say a big thank you. Every time you speak, I'm so inspired. I learned so much, even from your generosity in sharing. I like what Betty Geshoke said that, you know, you're amazing. You put fire in her belly. I think you put fire in all our bellies. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. We are so honored deeply for you wanting to share your journey. Um, you have expansive experience, I'm sure Felistas has shared in corporate world, but also as a business owner, you know, an entrepreneur. And, you know, such a mentorship session is fantastic in helping our SME network to really see, you know, the quality, the level there, the aspirations you can put in for your enterprise and really think of yourself from all those global standards. And this is why we are so, so uh, interested in featuring Mary. I would like to hear from more of you whether you want her back. I've seen a few people saying, um, you know, what do I do next? And uh, Mary, you shared that you felt it was rushed. I'll be more than happy to have another mentorship circle for, it, you know, if it's possible to go deeper or explore any other social media that you have experience in but a big thank you from Invest in Africa. I must say even as IIA, we continue to learn from you. And I know that you have already had an opportunity to come and specifically mentor our IIA team and staff. And I'd like to call on the other SMEs who would like to see similar sessions for your own teams. Please reach out to Mary. Um, she can tailor around her extensive experience. And I know Invest in Africa will continue to lean on you to continue to learn. Personally, Mary has been my mentor for many years. She has been my CEO at one point, and I continue to lean to her today, even as I continue to grow my career. So Mary, thank you very much. And um, I, you know, I just want to extend my gratitude too to the SMEs who registered, who are logged in who are still here about 10 minutes after we had said this all end. Like, um, you know, this would not have been a success without you. And uh, we, we continue to be inspired and, and uh, motivated by your interest to learn. We'll continue to arrange for you sessions which are helpful to help you in this journey of recovery and building back better. I think the surprises of the pandemic are yesteryear. We are building resilient businesses which can overcome any, any um, unforeseen you know, um, things in our journey that come up and show up like COVID-19, unlike last year. So please let us know how can we continue to support you. 
Thanks for listeners. We've done an amazing job. And Mary, again, thank you for remaining data to you. And we shall connect. Thank you.